Would you say that uh, technology is dehumanizing? It can be, but anything can be dehumanizing. Certain relationships can be dehumanizing. So certain viewpoints can be dehumanizing. And in fact, we have a, a society that prides itself on its accomplishments, and people are still basically operating at a subhuman level. And that's even in the arts and in sciences. You know, you can get away with a lot if you act a part of, uh, let's say, DC. You can act a part of decency. You can act a part of knowledge and being knowledgeable and educated. You can act those parts and still be a subhuman. You know, behind the scenes, be a, just a pure beast. Get away with it. You have not a, you know, pure moral fiber in you whatsoever. No doubt about it. Is, <clears throat> is black magic a form of sickness and or disease? Well, I, I think that it's a step on the path, see, because we have to know what black magic is in order to know what white magic is. Right? <clears throat> so it's another step on the path. Remember, we're here in the arena of human experience to, to master everything, but first you need to experience it. You need to become master in a certain way, spiritual master. You have to know the darkness completely inside out. Otherwise, you have to worry about the doctors, spiritual masters, for real, don't worry about it, because they, they've been there, see, they know it, to be it. And we're talking about the saints in history as well, it's some of the darkest characters in human history, right? And, but then they convert, that is to say, they go beyond that, they step out of it, they see it as, oh, okay, they can, they've done that, they can be that way, and then they, they move beyond that into a higher level of their own nature, see, see. creatively speaking. So we're, we are saying that, yeah, it could be a sickness, like white magic could be a sickness, and everything good can be a sickness to somebody, and everything bad and dark can be a sickness to others. So others if we're talking about spiritual enlightenment or realization, we're talking something uh, that includes the neutral, being neither one side or the other side, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. So we, in other words, there is, there is such a thing as in the abstract of the heart, say, like being okay, just being here. Yeah. And that's why atheists can have much more common sense about human relations than, let's say, theists in some cases. Because it's just about doing good, doing what's right and doing what is fair for all. Basically, giving everybody a fair shot at what it is and, and making it work on Earth. We're talking about atheism being practical. Yeah, making it work on Earth for everybody, if it's possible. So bringing people together and, and uh, discussing things and using intelligence to, to make things work instead of uh, emotion and violence. See? So we're appealing more to higher reasoning, which I'm not an advocate of particularly, but creative intelligence definitely. See? And we, we kind of, I think the world is potentially a much more beautiful place. If we can put down the arms and, and start working from the heart, remember the heart first, maybe we have a better chance of bringing some degree of intelligent neutrality between nations, but it's got to be hard for us. Um, what are your thoughts on certain religions that advocate using magic, such as Wicca or Santeria? Is it true that they use white magic only? Well, uh, the way I relate to the religion, same way I relate to music, is you, you, can't, you can't really accuse the general of what it is. We have to speak about individuals. So. Music is not about anything. It's really the injured, the individual, it's a musician who has to use music. I mean, it's not medicine is wide, you know, a wide, broad sort of swaths of uh, potential. But we have to know who the practitioner is. So it's always who is the practitioner. Then it's the practitioner that brings light or brings the darkness. So not the thing itself. It's not the music. It's not the anything. It's the individual who uses it. Yeah. That brings the heaven or the hell out in all its glory. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of these magic, what isn't magic? See, what isn't appearing to disappear already? See, so the whole idea of the universe in terms of phenomena is a form of magic. It's a magical display of stuff appearing and disappearing. So it's all magic. And we're all here, and then we disappear. So boom, poof. Where's my grandfather? My great grandfather? They were here for how long? Boom. Before you know it. They don't exist anymore. So it's, it's all magic. It's all appearing to disappear as we speak. And so in terms of using magic for better or for worse, that's relative. It's up to the individual to make it work for themselves as much as possible. But 
If you're out to harm other peeps, then you're creating a whole different kind of field around yourself. The idea is we can help one another, but we're not all willing to do that. And that's the sad truth of it. We can't. For the life of us, we can't really seem to be able to help one another. Can a psychic attack result in someone becoming stronger? In other words, can it empower someone to change? And move well, it depends. If you're the victim, it could help you a lot to know that that's possible. See, if you were victimized by a psychic attack and then all of a sudden you don't like that, just as you don't like being beaten up on the street or somewhere, you want to protect yourself, so you become stronger and more willful, more determined to, you know, to protect yourself and be safe. And we have so much power in us as human beings, that is spirits, you know, as spirits, human spirits. Uh, we can draw from a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, reserve in us uh, if, if we need that. We don't usually look at our lives in, in that way. We, we're really so happy, for the most part, as ordinary beings, to be content to be a certain type of person that satisfies another type of person, that satisfies our family, that satisfies that. And we're just okay with being okay. That's not enough for us. We're never living at our potential if we're just being okay with okay. There has to be more of the extreme, but I mean the positive extreme has to be brought into it. There has to be much more uh, drive towards uh, excellence. And that could be extreme, but maybe it's not extreme. It really depends. I mean, we have so much power in us, so, so being extreme is what, what our norm should be. We should be extremely involved, extremely passionate, extremely motivated, extremely active, extremely this, you know, musical. We should be extremely musical. We should be extremely poetic. We should be extremely you know, intellectual, extremely good. Can having even brief or minimal contact with a negative individual, such as making eye contact or speaking with them on the phone, cause someone to become open and vulnerable? Yes, to we're, we're vulnerable to those influences for sure. I mean, young souls, you know, vulnerable souls, you know, innocent people are victimized by all manner of influences, all manner of tricks and, and deception and thus subject to harm. And we need to educate people so that they are careful with their perceptions, they're careful with their communications, they're careful with their associations to protect themselves. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy to even be talking about it. Where, where, you know, people are just at such high risk, you know, just being around other peeps, it's amazing. Where people are so harmful, in a sense, you know, to one another without knowing it. And they, and uh, so, yeah, we, we have a, a ways to, to go yet as a, as, a, as a species, as a race to, to come up, so we, we feel okay with each other, really, you know, we have a long ways to go, yeah, we have not understood yet, there's still too much conflict, for no reason at all, and for ridiculous reasons, when they are reasons, they're ridiculous, and crazy. Yeah. Heart first? No, they don't want to hear about heart first, they want to hear about guns first, and so we have that sort of, uh, I guess you might say, game that runs amok. And we need love for us. That should be the game that runs crazy. Go ahead. In chapter 31 you write, lower spirits can generate noises which are often accompanied by the feeling or presence of distinct psychic tension. Mm -hmm. These dis psychic disturbances may also cause the victim to hear voices or possesses stressful thought patterns. Mm -hmm. In essence, such manifestation, manifestations, their correspondences and their apparent time-space coincidences set off a circuitry of fear, anxiety, apprehension, paranoia, and disease. Exactly. What is yeah, that's built into us all the time. Yeah, what is the point of such disturbances? Do the low spirits that produce such activity feed off the negative reactions of their victims? Uh, it seems that that's a form of food for some beings, uh, so we have to acknowledge that. You know, what is food for one is poison for another, and we're talking about people feeding off of darkness and agitation and grief and anxiety, uh, and there are those who just can't. Uh, it stresses people, other people out completely where uh, such, uh, say, negativity is toxic and painful to, to others who are more, let's say, uh, positive in nature and relaxed. 
Uh, but we need to be able to handle both sides of this spectrum. We have to be able to handle the toxicity and the non-toxicity, the negative and the positive, uh, properly and balancedly. And then we need to go beyond that so that we get beyond the negative and concerns about and fears about the negative and the positive and concerns and fears about the positive not being what the positive should be. See? Uh, so we need to go beyond our mental, um, I guess you might say, structuring and programming and emotional programming, cultural programming, so we can find out what the real you is about that is the balance already for all these problems that are showing up or appear to be problems and issues that, uh, you know, I guess you might say plaguing humanity from a psychological level. Uh, we are the solution. Now, when are we going to be open enough to know that we are the solution? And when are we going to be that open or so open to be the solution, in fact? Um, what should one do uh, when they're confronted with such a uh, situation of being disturbed by noises? Or well, noises? calm yourself. For sure, it's, it's good to be aware of the fact that you're being disturbed by noises and you know they might be external to you, exterior to your, your body, your internal state, uh, but yet they may also be in your mind too. So you need to know what you may be cause of and causing in, let's say, your environment relative to a negative resonance that you are involved in at the moment. So there could be some correspondence with this correspondence with what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you've been through, and then you may be vibing on somebody else's sort of darkness and you, you, you're like a tuning fork for that, you're at the right pitch for it. And so we need to know when that is it, when we are cause or effect in terms of negative stress. We need to know that. So. Can making changes to one's diet or, or yeah, environment Yeah, yeah, being conscious of it and being conscious that each one of us at source is already peaceful, free of the neuroses and identification or programming of stress, stopping and breathing is proof of the fact. Letting it go, just stop, be stillness right now, just like that. Nothing. Recovering. What about yoga or certain types of meditation? Can that help or hinder someone who's been a victim of psychosis? It may hinder some, but it may help others. See? Just as pain is a problem for some, without pain you don't think of no pain. So, you know, we have to work with what it is from what we feel our lesson is and what we feel our solution is. And who we are in the process of dealing with this phenomena you know, based upon our individual experience as humans, and see if there's any peace anywhere in the mix for ourselves, any resolution that's true in terms of healing. So we bring the word healing into this, and calming is part of the healing, and finding peace is part of the healing. But not everybody's ready for any, any idea of that, see, or any concept of peace yet, see, because they are, not, they are not at that place yet where their minds can even consider peace. And people are that wound up because of stress and suffering and neuroses and darkness and negativity where they are in a panic state. See? And we're talking about people in extreme poverty where they are absolutely desperate to survive. Right? And we have no idea of that if we're comfortable and relaxed and you know, living in the okay world. We have no idea what that is unless we've been there. And if you've been there, then you know that it's, it's a very painful condition see, for the peace. And when we really sense that and we really feel that, then we're going to make services available to peace for real because you don't want to be in a society where that is really predominating in any way, a real way, and affecting everybody else psychically. It doesn't make any sense.